Hello and welcome to this presentation, Cash Settled Futures. In earlier presentations, we mentioned that a futures contract can either be described as being physically settled or cash settled. If we have a physically settled futures contract, then on futures delivery day, the underlying asset is delivered to the buyer of the future from the seller of the future. In a cash settled futures contract, no such underlying asset is delivered. We sometimes describe these futures contracts as being a notional agreement to either make or take delivery of the underlying product. Now futures contracts, as we know also from previous presentations, can be used to manage risk, in other words, hedge or speculate or arbitrage. So what we're going to do is to look at an example of how a futures contract can be used to hedge even though no underlying asset is actually going to be delivered. Well, just like physically settled futures contracts, the cash settled futures contract during its lifetime is still going to be marked to market. In other words, gains and losses associated with a futures position, in other words, variation margin, are going to be paid and received right up until the last day in the life of the futures contract. All that happens on the last day in the life of a cash settled future is that the position is closed out at the final futures price. The gains and losses associated with a futures position can then be used to offset potentially any adverse movements in the online position of the hedger. Now examples of cash settled futures may include futures contracts based upon equity indices, carbon emission for example, or electricity. Clearly in the case of carbon emissions, it's impractical to deliver such a thing. So we need still a derivative which will enable us to protect ourselves against adverse movements in that particular market. So what we're going to do now is to look at an example of a cash settled future and then see how we can use that futures contract to hedge our position. So let's look at an example of an equity index futures contract which is described as being cash settled. In this instance the unit of trading is based upon the FTSE 100 index and equity index futures have the concept of the index multiplier. In other words in the case of the FTSE 100 index each time the index price moves up or down a point £10 will be made or lost as far as the holder of the futures contract is concerned. As we can see, the futures contract is cash settled. You don't actually deliver the shares that make up the FTSE 100 index. And we'll see in a hedge example in just a moment how this works. The delivery months are standardized, March, June, September, and December. And of course, we use the expression delivery months, but of course, it's a notional agreement to make or take delivery of these shares. The index, of course, is a price barometer based upon performance of the top 100 UK company shares on a market capitalization based uh, approach. The futures contract is also related to the index. So the futures price moves up or down. For example, the index is quoted at say 56.00 spot five. Now we know with futures contracts that we have this concept of a tick size and tick value. The tick size is simply the smallest incremental movement which the futures price is permitted to move in measures of. So in this case, it's half an index point. Therefore, if one point, as we've mentioned earlier on, is worth £10, then half a point is £5. So the tick value simply tells us how much we're going to make or lose if the futures price moves up or down by its smallest increment. What we're going to do now is to take this futures contract and see how it can be used by a hedger to protect themselves against adverse movements in the value of the shares that make up the FTSE 100 index. So let's imagine in this example we are currently short of the underlying asset. In this instance the underlying asset is the FTSE 100 index. And because we are short of the underlying index what we're worried about is the index price rising over time. So in order to protect ourselves against rising prices, we need to purchase some futures contracts. To work out the appropriate number of futures contracts to, to buy, we need to 
know what the hedge ratio is. And from previous presentations, we saw that the simple hedge ratio is to take the value of our exposure and divide it by the value of one futures contract. Let's suppose here that we need to acquire eventually £56,000 worth of the FTSE 100 UK company shares. And let's suppose that the index is currently trading at 56.00. So if you were to take 56.00 and multiply it by the value of one index point, which is given to us in the design of the futures contract, then we can simply say that one futures contract gives us exposure to £56,000 worth of the top 100 UK company shares. And because we've already said that we are assuming here that we need to acquire £56,000 worth of the FTSE 100 shares on a future day, then what we need then is simply one futures contract to hedge that forward exposure. So what we do is that we look into the futures market today and we know that futures prices will eventually track and converge with the underlying asset price. We know this through previous presentations where we looked at the concept of cost of carry and arbitrage. And we can see here that today the futures price is trading at 56.30. Suppose then that over time the final futures price, which settles against the FTSE 100 index on its last trading day, is 57.50. Then if you buy futures at 56.30 and it settles at 57.50, that's a difference of 120 index points. We know that each index point is worth £10 and we traded one futures contract. So the benefit to us, the hedger then, is £1,200. This is called the hedge benefit or the futures profit or of course variation margin. So that cash compensation then is used because as we know in a cash settled futures contract the seller of the futures contract doesn't actually have to now hand over to the buyer of the futures contract the top 100 UK company shares, all that happens is that the buyer of the future goes now into the underlying equity market and purchases those shares, but of course they'll be doing so at an inflated price. But of course the compensation from the futures contract offsets that extra cost. So to summarise then, what we've seen here is that a person who is short of the underlying asset, in this case the FTSE 100 index, can protect themselves against rising prices by simply buying an appropriate number of futures contracts. So all that happens. Just like with a physically settled contract, the futures contract will be marked to market every day. So when you look back over the life of the futures contract, as we can see here, the holder of the future will benefit to the tune of £1,200. That variation margin benefit then is used to offset against the fact that being a natural short and because it's not physically settled, you need to cover yourself now by going into the underlying market, buying the asset admittedly at an inflated price, but of course that futures compensation offsets you against that higher cost.